Bingo is really one of those games, huh? The first form of bingo was in 1530s Italy by the name Lotto. It's literally just the lottery. And things picked up in the 18th century with Tombola. Tombola was made in Naples, which introduced dedicated cards, tokens, and calling out numbers all within one sitting, making it feel more like a game than plain lottery tickets. You had a card that looked something like this, and as they called out the numbers, if you marked multiple numbers on a row, that could be a prize for you. Eventually, carnivals standardized a more familiar form in the 1920s called Bino, <laughs> and a guy named Edwin stole the idea to make and commercialize Bingo. To make sure everyone took on his version of the game, for a while he just called it Bingo or Bino. A game. <laughs> Look, the scoring features are patented, it's original. First to five in a row wins, but sometimes people like blackout or shapes like the postage stamp being the four in the top corner. But that sums it up. The end, good game. Or is it? I always get so excited to play bingo, and then it's so underwhelming. It's just a constant buildup and anticipation just for them to say 55. Bingo! Ah. Come on! There's a reason this game's main audience is children, old geezers, and gambling addicts. I always get so frustrated, mainly annoyed, that someone like me, the best at all the games, has essentially a random chance at winning no matter what. So of course, you know me, I gotta fix this up. So let's get into Bingo 2. Alrighty, so like the tic-tac-toe situation, this is such a simple game, so we gotta be sure to keep the spirit of the original while still making an actually fun version. So, let's make it less chance, more strategy. One reason bingo is a good game is because you can have a freaking crowd playing, so let's keep that up. And let's just make it fun, alright? <laughs> okay, so now I think we just jump on the main problem. What if instead of random numbers being called every time, we called the numbers? Hear me out. Usually there's a moderator slash announcer that rolls out out some balls from a cage with numbers that are completely random. But what if those numbers weren't all random? Let's imagine two players as an example. Looking at this card, you already have this spot, so why not go for this middle column? So you want them to call for 40 next. While player two might be thinking, oh, I want like this diagonal line bingo, so I'm gonna go for number 10. So here's what goes down. In that round, both of them pitch those two numbers that they want. So now those two numbers are the only numbers that can be picked for that round. This way, every single turn, someone gets a spot that they want. So the moderator randomly picks happens to be 40. Now everybody marks 40 on their board like normal. So next round comes around. Player 1 is happy because they got what they want. They want 34 next. Player 2 didn't want 40, but now maybe they want 39 instead so they can go for this column. So those numbers get put into the cage. This was already picked, no longer in there. They're in the cage and the next number is... 10. This of course was left over from last round, but they still just mark it if they have it. Player 2 does, player 1 does not. So essentially the cage of numbers is made up of all the player selections across all of the rounds. To make it fair, there will be a written form of the cage for everybody to see. Let me do that real quick. There we go. When you highlight a number blue with something like this guy, <laughs> that means it's currently in the cage, along with highlighting the already drawn numbers with green so nobody loses track. I think I drew out the hard part. Already I'd say this is a massive improvement. There's a whole level of strategy that was completely missing in the original, so now I'll finally start winning and they'll be proud of it. See, player two decided to go for this column after 40 was drawn, but 10 was still in there, so they could have gone for this diagonal still if they wanted. But since they had 40, maybe it was worth shooting for this. So now it's all about just deciding which five in a row to go for, with the current filled in squares, the potential cage numbers, and seeing what your opponent has already filled in. And to clarify that, if anybody asks to see your card, you have to show them, because that can be a big piece of the strategy. To make this a bit more fair, I'm cutting down the number of potential numbers. <laughs> Normally it goes to 75 with 15 in each column, but as you can see, I instinctively went to 50 because that just makes more sense. I don't know. <laughs> so now it'll be like 1 through 10, 11 through 20, and it'll only have 50 numbers potentially. Now I gotta redo all these. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that took so long. Now I think we need another mechanic to spice it up even more. On your turn, you choose a number to be put in, but that can just pile up with all the numbers and feel just like the original. So if there's too many numbers, what if you could take numbers out of it? <laughs> 
<laughs> so if I'm player two and I see that 30 is in the cage and I don't have that on my card at all, instead of putting a number in for that turn, I can just take one out. But the downside is player one does still get to put one in. This would help in the late game so the number you need has better odds of being chosen. I didn't totally clarify before, but as long as the numbers are random, it doesn't really matter how you pick them. Ideally, it's all virtual with a random number generator. Or you could use the classic bingo ball cage or just draw pieces of paper out of a hat. As long as you can trust the person drawing the numbers and you can easily take numbers out, it doesn't totally matter. But no matter what it is, we're still calling it the cage. So what happens if two people get bingo at the same time? Like so. You look at the five that you marked and whichever one adds up to higher amount wins. 22 plus. And the free spot counts for zero because it's guaranteed. So in this case, player one wins. Cool, I think this base game kind of solves the main problems of the original bingo, and it's very innovative. And I should get some credit for once, come on. Bingoat. <laughs> Let's get my logo in there. <laughs> Bingoat is already very solid, but of course priority three. Let's just make it fun, all right? <laughs> it's gotta be super fun. So let's get in some bonus, bonus features. features. Yeah! The free space in the middle is actually genius, and I'll emphasize that you can mark it whenever you want. It doesn't have to be at the very beginning. If you want to mark that one very last, go for it. We all need a box to mark in our darkest hour. Come on, come on, come on. 24? No, please. <laughs> And for the main bonus feature, power-ups. On each of these squares around the middle, we're gonna add a power-up. So when you mark that spot, you obviously get to use that power-up. Starting on this left one, guest appearance from Barricade from Chess 2. This guy simply sits on top of a number on someone's card, like this 15, meaning it can never be marked ever. So player two cannot get this diagonal anymore. It's pretty good, so you can only use that on one person you specifically target, not everybody playing. And just a reminder, a lot more people can be playing than just two. So this is where you can mark and get the barricade to use it somewhere else. Here as well. Next on top we'll put a star. <laughs> when you gain this star you choose a number you want to be invincible like Mario. Let's just put it on 25 right now. This means that if you put that number in the cage the other players can't take it out. If you wanted to, you could even use the star on a number already in the cage. And you can use it on a marked or unmarked number. It's gonna be secure once it's marked. Next will be the eraser. So if player one marks this, they can erase this 22 for not only player two, but everybody else, except for themselves. Make sure you mark what you did on the grid. And people can put this back into the cage if they want to, but the person who used it still keeps the marking. All right, now we're gonna have another guest appearance, monkey. <laughs> when you mark on the monkey square, you get to swap any two markings on the card. Now this one's tricky. You don't switch the numbers on the card, you switch the actual marking that's on it. For example, I could swap this 10 with this 22, so that marking is now on 22. Or I could swap this marking with this barricade. The one thing you can't swap is where you get the power-ups. For example, swapping the 10 and 14 wouldn't swap where you can earn the barricade. But this can be a good thing because if you swap that over, you instantly get the barricade power-up which means you can use it on your opponent. I'm, so, I'm sorry this is confusing, but I promise I think it makes sense. <laughs> and like I said, you have to use the power up before the next round. So since I just marked this barricade, I have to place that barricade right then before we put in our next numbers into the cage. Now I'm gonna add the best power up of all, the stamp. In original bingo, the postage stamp was one way to win, getting these four in the corner. So, if you get those four, you get the postage stamp power-up, which simply lets you stamp or mark a spot anywhere on your card. So if I just marked the 50, then I get the stamp, and I'll do my stamp right on this 42. This applies only to you, not anyone else, and the stamp can't be swapped by the monkey. Woo! Okay. Well, I'd say this is pretty dang solid, and the best part is you can play it right now. Obviously, in real life, you can figure out the details, but I got my man Yippy and his team to develop a super clean online version, so there's no whining about my amazing visuals getting in the way. Seriously, though, it's super sick and way accessible thanks to these guys. Just head to this link in the description. Have fun playing bingo to everyone, and be sure to tell me all your good experiences with it because I left no room for bad game design. Let me know what else you want to see and subscribe.